for today's tutorial, I've been having some fun with the Perspective Grid tool in Illustrator recently, so I thought I would go over that. So first off, what is the Perspective Grid? The Perspective Grid is a tool that lets you, wait for it, see a grid with options for different angles in which items appear or different perspectives. To see it, you can turn the Perspective Grid tool on by going into the View menu at the top of Illustrator and under the Perspective Grid submenu, choose to show grid. Or you can type Command Shift I on a Mac and Control Shift I on a PC. You go through these same menus or shortcuts if you want to then hide it. There's also the icon in your tools panel that has lines of boxes and perspective or you can use Shift P. Either way these will pull up your perspective grid. If you don't have the perspective grid tool active you won't be able to do anything with it however. So when you first open your grid you'll typically see a two-point perspective with lots of of lines and with the tool selected, circles and diamonds. These are tools that control how your grid works. On the top left, you'll also see a widget with a cube in a circle with one side usually highlighted. This is the tool that, with the grid tool active, lets you decide which plane of the grid you're using. You can switch between planes by clicking on the different sides here, or with the number pad, using one for the left side, two for the ground, and three for the right. You can also use four if you don't want any of them active. The gray line cutting through everything is your horizon line, or how tall your perspective is from your ground plane. On either side of this line, there will be a small white diamond which you can drag up or down to change the height of that. Beneath that horizon line, there's also a green grid with another pair of diamonds on the left and right sides. This is the handle for moving your entire grid, letting you move it around depending on where you want the grid to start. In the middle of that grid are five shapes. The top white diamond lets you control how big or small the cells in your grid are, letting you change how detailed the guides are. Under that is a white circle which lets you control the measurements on the grid, which will alter the X and Y coordinate information when moving things around. Below that is another gray circle, which lets you control where your ground plane is. This, together with the horizon line, will control how tall the perspective you're working in is. To the right and left of that circle are the last two, which let you control the angle of your right and left planes on the grid. Moving up the center of your grid from those circles, there's yet one more circle at the top. This lets you control how high the cells in your grid reach. This is the same thing you'll change with the white circles halfway along the bottom of your angled blue and orange lines, though it'll control how far along the planes your grid cells will appear on either side. Lastly, the circles where the angled blue and orange triangles end are what are known as your vanishing points. This is another way of controlling the perspective's angle and depth. These are controls you can use regardless of which grid you're using. Speaking of, the tool does come with more than what you're seeing. It comes with three built-in perspectives and the option to define your own custom grids as well. To start with, there's one point perspective. This is a perspective where there's only one vanishing point. The vanishing point, by the way, is the source for all your lines in an image, typically with a triangular tunnel coming out of it. As things get further from your eyes, in real life and in art, they get smaller and closer together the closer to that vanishing point they get. One point perspective is usually used for things you're looking at head on, such as looking at a cube or the wall of a building, or when something's long enough that it obscures your vision of anything else, like a railway track or a roadway. Next up, the default for the perspective grid tool is the two-point perspective. This is a type of perspective that works the same way as one-point perspective, but with two vanishing points instead of one. They tend to be more angled views, showing the left and right side of an object or scene together. Uh, for example, this is what you're seeing if you're standing on a city sidewalk and can see down both sides of intersecting streets from where you are. The third type of perspective is three-point perspective, which has, you guessed it, three vanishing points. One for the left and right, and one for the vertical part of your scene. Also known as bird's or worm's eye view, three-point perspective is what happens when you're looking at an object while it's tall enough, or you're tall enough, that your head needs to tilt to see it. On top of those, you can, under the perspective menu inside the view menu, define your own custom grids. In the dialog box for that, you have options to control what kind of perspective it is, either one, two, or three point. You can also choose what units it uses if you feel like it. 
the scale and how far apart each grid line or cell is. You can also set the exact angle you want the view to be with the viewing angle and distance, how high the horizon line is, and how far up or down the third vanishing point is if you're using that perspective. Lastly, you get options to control the colors and opacity of your grid sides. Another aspect of the perspective grid is that you can move existing shapes, text, and objects onto that perspective grid. To do this, we switch over to the perspective selection tool. You can use it by clicking and holding on the perspective grid tool until the tray opens and then choosing the other tool, or you can press shift V. With this tool active, pick your plane in the widget and click and drag your object. This will automatically place it onto the perspective you've selected, letting you scale and move it around. It should be noted, though, that this will expand your object, so if you're using compound paths or complicated shapes, you might want to make a backup copy of your object or text. You can also move an object from one plane on your grid to another. To do this, select the object with your perspective selection tool, and holding the selected object, use the number shortcuts I went over to switch the object's planes. Now, a final note is that it should be noted that this is not actually 3D. It looks like 3D, and it's really cool, but these aren't objects you'll be able to manipulate in 3D space. If you want to do real 3D illustration work, such as you would see in architecture, you should probably look into CAD and 3D programs instead. If you're on a tight budget, I'd actually recommend checking out something like Blender or Google SketchUp. As always, I hope you've all learned something and enjoyed yourself doing it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or other feedback, you can let me know with a comment down below. You can also like this video and share it around, which helps with Google's rankings. And I'm planning to be back here every Friday, so be sure to subscribe for more awesome content. Have a great day, everyone.